it did not enter my mind at all to ever go into the ministry. And so I was completely into my career and I'm just, you know, chugging along and he's going to different ministry things. And I would go unless I had a call to go to work because that was, you know, uh, just my priority. So I had loved Jesus, but I just didn't have my priorities together. And it was February 25th, 1985, that I was supposed to be riding in a four by four truck. And at a certain point, my stunt was to press the button, which would make the hood of the vehicle go up in smoke. And then I was to dive out of the vehicle. When I pressed the button and went to dive, it wasn't a smoke bomb, it was a 14 pound naphthalene fire bomb. And so usually if a stunt person's working around fire, you either have on an asbestos suit or fire gel. I had nothing. So my entire face, neck, chest, arms were all burned in second and third degree burns. It completely took off my upper lip. I was knocked out. And when I came to, they told me a helicopter is coming to take me to the Sherman Oaks Burn Center. Who, who should they call? And I said, call, call my husband. He needs to start praying for me. And so they got me into the helicopter. And I remember on the way to the burn center having this heart to heart and just going, I just kind of saw life. I saw my entire life. I saw that I'd been duped by the devil, you know, that my priorities were not straight, that I had the industry above God, and that there's no amount of money that's worth disobeying God and not following his path. I should have been killed. I knew this hit was to kill me. So now I'm in intensive care, critical condition, being shot full of morphine, having allergic reactions, asking to be taken off the morphine. My dad comes in, he starts crying. My husband, who never cries, <laughs> comes in. He takes a look at me, he starts crying. So I'm like, okay, this is gonna, this is not good. And he just said, Desiree, and I thank God for this. I thank God for the two years we had sitting under the Word, hearing from the Copelands, having them teach us the Word, that Jesus loves us, that He's a good God, that He's a healing God, and that the Word of God is health and healing to all your flesh. And my husband said, this is what we're standing on, Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. And I had a little cassette player. <laughs> And they brought it in with all my Kenneth Copeland tapes and Gloria Copeland tapes. And I would hear the word and I would meditate on the word. And what should have been the worst time of my life was the best time. The other thing that I, we so learned was, you know, what you're saying, not going by what you're feeling. And the nurse wanted me, my lip was all infected. It was starting to grow back. And she wanted me to look in the mirror. and. I wasn't going to accept how I looked. I didn't want to identify with how I looked. She said, you need to accept that you're going to be scarred for the rest of your life. I said, no, I'm not going to look. And my husband would bring eight by 10 photos and say, Desiree, I want you to look at this. This is what I want you to see. This is how you're going to look. And so I walked out of there 10 days later with it looking like I had a sunburn with Dr. Grossman saying, Desiree, this is a miracle. We would read the Word of God to her for 12 hours. Her dad would take a shift, and then I would take a shift because we were standing on that scripture, the Word of God is health and healing to all your flesh. And we read the Word of God to her. We would quote healing scriptures. And we had been just so blessed to be under Ken and Gloria's ministry and teaching. And we'd begin to quote the Word and confess the Word of God like Ken and Gloria had taught, taught us. And in 10 days, she just walked out of there. And I'm just so thankful. God's not a respecter of persons. What he's done for us, he'll do for you. And his word's health and healing. And if you meditate on it, if you think about it. Faith comes. Faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing by the word of God.